Good evening. I'd like to open the uh, Deerfield Planning Board for March 12th, 2018 at 7 o'clock here at the Deerfield Town Hall, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. Tonight's agenda is to look at minutes from previous meetings, and I believe we have two. Review mail. We have some new business, uh, which is really just an informal discussion with Paul McMahon regarding possible solar installation off of King Philip Ave. Then we have old business, which is to review draft zoning bylaws for the cultivation and processing, product manufacturing, and retail sale of marijuana in Deerfield and schedule a public hearing. Then we'll go to any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to posting in this meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. Are there any other uh, comments about the agenda or anything else? I would uh, like to say that we have a full planning board and thank you very much. This is actually but the last couple months we've had a really good turnout here. So, uh, and we all have our name tags, so people know who we are, which is great. Um, so let's go to this, some minutes because um, we didn't do that last time, and both of the previous me uh, meetings had something to do with tonight's topic too. So you want to look at February 5th, which is the uh, the last regular meeting we had. Any, any comments on it or? I didn't see anything. It's just the one that I, I saw. The third one up on the on the uh, first page is at the last sentence. Retail is licensed and limited to 20% of liquor licenses. I, th I think what it is is retail is licensed and limited to at least right. at least 20%. <clears throat> like you can, that's the minimum you can do. Okay. And also, isn't that still um, pending? Pending. Well, they haven't, they haven't sorted out how they're going to round up or round down yet. So it's, it's in the pending legislation as well, so it's still... Right. Right. Well, yeah. it, it, supposedly, go. this next week, they're going to have the final decision on that. That, I just, that sentence is wrong, so either we strike it or we 
change okay, it. Let's, just, let's, just, let's just strike this out. Strike it. Retail is licensed and limited to 20% of liquor license. I believe that's not correct, so let's just take that out. Doesn't, it's, not, it's not important to the minutes, so. Okay, all right. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second the motion. February 5th. February 5th. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, everybody was here. Cool. Mm -hmm. Seven zero zero, Paul. Yep, got it. And then we have. Uh, I didn't. I, I didn't change the date to the twentieth in the pop, but it's, it's correct in the minutes, so I, I just marked it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's good. So now let's look at February twentieth. Minutes on a similar topic. Actually, are these the same minutes, Paul? Oh no. Yeah, they're close on this, the first part. But I think we started that meeting at seven, not six. You got the same time, kind of. Oh yes, okay. Make that, that is just will be six. Right. It was seven to ten. No, I got. We started seven on mine. Yeah. yeah, it started so at six fifteen. Down below. That, that February twentieth. Oh, 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 I was looking at that, sorry. Oh, down okay, you're right. So it's just that one sentence. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, same. So it's just that one sentence, Paul. I'm sorry? The one sentence is left over from the previous yeah. right above review of minutes. That just needs to be. Mm -hmm. Which sense? Who says John? Wait, open the meeting at six fifteen by the agenda. It was, it was only set was seven. It was seven, seven. and you have that correct that. above. Oh, okay, all right. So yeah, up here you have it. It's right, but down here. I'll make it seven. Let me take a look at the. about this I'm good. I move that we approve the minutes of February 20th second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed abstain 700 thank you Paul for yep. catching us up okay. I'd like to ask the uh, on new business we uh, scheduled for an informal Discussion is Paul McMahon here. I am here, sir. Do you, um, we've got another topic tonight. So is this a short? Do you want to just ask a, a couple questions or let us know something, or is it going to be a? Sure. You uh, feel uh, like basically it's very short. Uh, uh, Why don't you come up? Because actually, just so people know, unless you're talking in the microphones, the people on TV can hear. So. Oh, sure. Hi, so why don't you just, yeah, we'll take a couple minutes to tell us about your... Uh, howdy, my name is Paul McMahon. I'm with a company uh, called Solar on Earth. Uh, we're located in Air Mass. Uh, we have a client uh, in town who owns a parcel of land, about a little over seven acre parcel. We'd like to put a small solar farm on it. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we've uh, come up with a preliminary design and before we went much further on it, we wanted to kind of get a feel for uh, the town's receptiveness uh, 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 to such a, a farm. Uh, our understanding is uh, uh, that there is a uh, uh, 100 foot, the, the zone that it's in, it's, it's off King Phillips Road. Uh, the zone that it is in is allowed for a solar farm with a 100 foot setback. So we've designed a, a, a farm with a 100 foot setback. Uh, it would be about 700 uh, uh, kilowatts. And I've got a, a preliminary design if, if you'd like to take a look at it. And uh, basically our, you know, my goal is just to get your receptiveness to it. If you're receptive, we'll Continue on. If if you're not, uh, uh, we'll punt. <laughs> uh, so it's up off of Cerro Street. Going, going. It's almost across from the proposed condo uh, project. It's a little bit 
Vermont. Is that Boron? You man Oh, King Philip Avenue. You're talking King Philip Avenue? Oh, what's here? Road. King Philip Avenue. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Right. That's yeah. right. <coughs> yeah. Sorry. Okay. It's between King Philip and Thayer Street. Yeah. I mean West Street. West. So I guess. It's between West Street and King Philip. Okay. I guess here's another. Uh, <coughs> well, what zoning district is that? Center Village. Center District. Village. Yeah, CBRD. It's like behind. Bob and Ben Schmitz. Right, so what he's doing here, is it by right or? It requires zoning, uh, zoning uh, planning board approval. We but it is. This is, would be a large ground mounted solar electric installation in a yes, it's, CVRD. It's, it's so that's a special, 10, special 10 kilowatts, permit. kilowatts, yeah. uh, but less than uh, 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 10 megawatts. So that would be a, a special permit, so that, and that, does come to us under uh, right that's right. under this so well just you know in general how receptive are we it's in our zoning so obviously we're receptive to it um, okay and we've had others in town it's, it's hard to you know there's a, we actually have a nice uh, a lot of good information in our zoning bylaws about the kind of things we're going to look at um, I can tell you the previous largest one that was done we looked a lot on water a lot of the issues that we look at are what happens to water in town especially in the center village because there's issues there, okay. Um, so it all has to be certainly contained and can't impact any other, you know, neighbors or anything else in town. Um, and then all, you know, most of the other things are all specified in here. You know, obviously things like traffic aren't going to be an issue probably. Right. Um, so some things we're going to want to, you know, more information on than others. All right. So we'll we'll proceed and put in a put in a, a plan and come and formally present. Yeah. And with a special permit, we do have a public hearing, and public hearing is when all the the neighbors uh, butters notified. Uh, yeah. are notified, and you know usually people do come to some of those and want to hear more about it. And so one thing I think we always encourage people to do is if you know some of the neighbors, you know let them let them know what's going on ahead of time, all so right. there's no surprises. Uh, right. All right. Terrific. We'll or fewer that. surprises. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, any other questions? So no. it's um, two plus acres. We're going to use two plus acres out of the seven. You can use how many? Uh, two, a little over two acres. It's a, it's a little over seven acre lot. And by the time you cut out the setbacks, we'll, we'll be using about two. We can tell you that there's been other experiences in town where it's actually the electric company that's it's more of an issue, I think, than... Sometimes the zoning board, planning board, so we'll, we'll be doing heads all up on that, that. one. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, 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 we remember that. Not really, that's right. To bring the three phase in, yeah. Uh, the three phase is right there on the street, so uh, uh, that part of it works. Yeah. All right, well, thank, thanks very much. We just want to do, uh, yeah. I've got a quick, one quick question sure. because you said it's right off the street. How are you going to get access to this piece of property? Uh, th that needs to be determined still. So that this is, is sort of a landlocked piece? It, it is. There's, there's a right-of-way coming down the side street, but it's not clear yet whether we can do it. And then uh, we're talking to another neighbor uh, who we might be able to cut a deal with to just bring it right in through. So through it's not property. really viable for Anything else? building purposes then? Because right, at this right. Time. It's, it's, uh, well, I, well, let me take that back. I don't know for sure. Yeah. I don't know for sure, but it looks landlocked. It's right behind the Holy Family. Behind Doc Schmidt, right? Or? Right, but yeah. the Holy Family the cemetery. cemetery. Yeah, it's like sandwiched between those two, and I think that's how they get access now, is off right. that little road that goes yeah. to the cemetery. cemetery. Because that would be my only comment: is it'd be a shame to you know burn up CVRD, you know, sewered and right. watered property. But if there's no, yeah, but if there's no uh, good access for them. It's a good second choice. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for your uh, feedback. Welcome. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> you know, when I um, went through the agenda, no one commented, but we did get an email earlier today about other potential uh, zoning bylaw changes, including accessory apartments and things like that, that our building inspector uh, has uh, written up. So if we do have time tonight, I think it might be worth taking a few minutes and looking at them. That's all right. Is that what's in front of us? Yes. So that would come under six. We didn't know about it 48 hours ahead of time. But. Got it. 
so now we um, old business review draft zoning bylaws for the cultivation and processing product manufacturing and retail sale of marijuana in Deerfield um, and then if we so determine we schedule a public hearing so we've had several meetings about this and our uh, town attorney has drafted some uh, draft zoning bylaws so should we do we have any um, general questions before we jump into the okay. draft bylaws All right, I would ask our Adam Costa to come up and help us walk through this. I believe, why don't you, you want to just quickly highlight before we get into it, is there, there weren't too many changes, I don't think, from last time. There, there weren't. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, again, Adam Costa uh, with me, Tellerman and Costa. So we were here just a couple of weeks ago, less than that, and reviewed what was uh, the second version of what I'd call the Marijuana Facilities and Operation Bylaw. Uh, you'd had a, a series of modifications you proposed, not too significant, but we did talk about them for the better part of a, a couple of hours. And um, I've now incorporated those changes into the document that you have before you. I did pass around um, a red line copy, again, thanks to um, limited access in my office. It's black and white, but you can see um, the changes are underlined, the additions are underlined, and the, the uh, deletions are, are stricken through. So I'll walk you through them. It'll take probably all of five minutes to do it, it's not uh, all that extensive, but then there is one other topic I, I wanna speak to as well. Um, so on the first page of the document, you can see here, and to help you identify the changes, you'll see along the left-hand margin of each page, there are vertical lines, and those highlight where there are accompanying changes somewhere along that line of the text of the document. So we made uh, two changes to item two in the proposed amendment. Uh, the first is simply something that was an oversight on my part when I prepared the last version, maybe because we were going back and forth about cultivation being allowed in the overlay district. Um, it is now allowed in the overlay district per the discussion we'd had a couple of weeks ago. And so I thought it appropriate to include the number 10 footnote, which is accompanying retailers, testing laboratories, and manufacturers uh, also alongside cultivators. And that footnote 10 down below has now been modified slightly to simply state that marijuana establishments are also authorized by special permit in the overlay district in accordance with section 4664. Uh, we had spoken last time about being more specific than simply saying certain types of marijuana establishments. And what you said to me is, why don't you simply identify the types based upon the terminology you've used? But as I look closer, you're allowing all types within the overlay district with the exception of actual social consumption operations, which we've later prohibited in the, in the bylaw anyway. Mm -hmm. So I've simply said that marijuana establishments, as that term is defined, are what are authorized by special permit within the overlay district. So that's the only change to, to item two on the first page. On the second page, under item four, all of the changes in item four are changes to the existing uh, medical marijuana bylaw, currently called the Me Medical Marijuana Overlay District, but soon to be called the Medical Marijuana Treatment Center bylaw. And the only change we've made here is based upon a discussion that was had. Um, Pat had suggested that we include a reference to the transferability of these permits, much like we've got a provision later in the bylaw to the transferability of recreational marijuana or marijuana establishment permits. And we've simply limited the transferability, stating that no permit shall be transferred by the recipient and will terminate in the event that there is an attempt to transfer it uh, or the recipient ceases operations or loses its license with the Commonwealth. So the same provisions for, for recreational, we've simply incorporated into the medical marijuana bylaw. So that's the change to item four. Item five is really the, the substance of uh, the marijuana establishment bylaw. Um, no changes on page three, which is the purpose and definition section. On page four, no changes to the applicability or overlay district sections. But in section 4665, which was previously uh, entitled performance standards, you'd mentioned that you also wanted to require certain dimensions, more stringent dimensions, specifically for uh, facilities within the residential agricultural overlay district. So I've done that in two ways. Uh, first, I've simply retitled it so there's no uh, misunderstanding that section 4665 is not just providing substantive performance standards, there are also dimensional standards as well. Uh, so I've given it a new title. And then on page five, you'll see there's a new number one, which says all marijuana establishments shall comply with the dimensional requirements of section 2300 
for the applicable or the underlying zoning district. Of course, applicable if it's in the underlying zoning district, underlying if it's in the overlay district. And then it says, except that the minimum side and rear yard setbacks for any marijuana establishment allowed in the residential agricultural zoning district shall be 25 feet. And of course, based upon where your overlay currently sits and based upon the restrictions that you've placed upon uh, uses within the residential over, uh, agricultural district, it's only cultivators that are allowed. So that restriction is essentially a restriction on cultivation facilities that they have to maintain these minimum 25 foot side and rear yard setbacks. Uh, then there's been a renumbering of the remaining uh, subsections on page five. On page six, there has been a change to section or proposed section 4666, which was identified or entitled mm -hmm. signage. Um, previously, I had provided for a, a, a standard for signage. Um, we spoke at length about that at the last meeting, and we reviewed the provisions of your existing bylaw and saw that it has adequate provisions even for the residential district that you are comfortable with, even for a cultivation facility in that district. And so now it reads much more simply than it did before. All signage for a marijuana establishment shall comply with the requirements of Section 3200 of this bylaw insofar as applicable. And then I thought it made sense to be specific, so I said including but not limited to the restrictions in Section 3230 thereof, as well as the marketing and advertising requirements of the state regulation governing marijuana establishments that dictate what can be shown on the sign and what sort of terminology can be used in the sign, things like that, specific to marijuana. And that's the last change to uh, item five. And then there's a new item six, which again was something that Pat had suggested at the last meeting, which was we're of course making these marijuana establishments subject to the issuance of a special permit and site plan review. Uh, her point was that when, whenever you've required uh, new uses, subject themselves to a site plan review process for purposes of internal consistency, you've gone to the site plan review section of your bylaw where there's a list of those uses that require site plan review and you've added the use in. And so I just went and added a final new use to that list, which is marijuana establishments as authorized by section 4660. Um, and so that's the new item six, just for clarity. And that's the sum and substance of what I had in my notes based upon the discussions we had at the last meeting. Again, not all that significant. Um, so that's all I have to say with respect to this bylaw. Um, I do want to mention now, and then I'll, I'll defer to you, Mr. Chairman, as to when I, when I raise it or how I discuss it. Um, I got a call from uh, one of your members after your last meeting with a suggestion that uh, I also draft, and I have copies of it here if the, if the board's interested, um, and it's consistent with what at least a few of your members had mentioned at the last meeting, which was giving uh, the voters an option at a town meeting to either adopt a bylaw, much like the one we've been discussing for three meetings now, uh, or to go the route of an outright prohibition. And I talked about the process, the fact that that requires not only the adoption of general and zoning bylaws by town meeting, but also would require a, a ballot question. But at least with respect to the bylaw piece, which of course you're, you're, you've got a deadline for given that the uh, the warrant will open, will close um, shortly. Um, I've drafted a couple of amendments and I've got copies of that here as well that would affect that prohibition. Relatively straightforward and simple, but that's the objective of what, uh, what I've got here. And again, I'll, I'll defer to you, Mr. Chairman. I think maybe we should take this first and then. Yeah, let's, let's stick to the bylaws uh, and just go over that. Yep. Any um, questions, comments? When it comes to using the plain industrial for recreational as well, there was some discussion that the um, plain industrial areas bylaws would not allow it because of having to adhere to federal law. Um, with that knowledge, I don't think that we can, we can add it, but I don't think that we can feel comfortable not getting a lawsuit from someone by having that knowledge that it's pretty much out of the picture for being used for that purpose. What are your thoughts on that, Adam? It'll be too restrictive. We, we kind of are going into this with the knowledge that it would be too restrictive. So I don't, I don't have the same concerns you do with respect to a lawsuit. 
and I say that because municipal liability, there, there used to be outright sovereign immunity for municipalities mm -hmm. where municipalities couldn't be sued. And of course, with things like the Mass Tort Claims Act, which is, at this point is decades old, that immunity has been, been, been lessened. Uh, so municipalities are subject to suit from time to time, but they still enjoy a certain degree of immunity. Well, I don't think I meant, you know, getting sued from a monetary standpoint, but okay. somebody in a different area, a residential area for that <laughs> matter, might come in and say, your bylaw, you knew this going into it, that that plant industrial district was pretty much off the table. Um, therefore, your bylaw was too restrictive. So... I want to put it here. Okay, I, I understand your question. Now you understand. I, I do. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I, I question to what extent we have knowledge of something being allowed or disallowed. We heard one individual speak and say that based upon organizational documents, documents that govern uh, the uses within an industrial park, uh, that the use may not be available because of the applicability of federal law and the inconsistency between what the Commonwealth now allows in the form of marijuana and what is prohibited under federal law. Um, we've not done any independent research on that. However, I think your point is well taken, and I would certainly be much more concerned, for example, if the solution that this board had reached was we're only going to allow marijuana facilities in the plan industrial district, nowhere else in, in the community, nowhere else in the town of Deerfield, just in the plan industrial district. Oh, that would away. subject it to challenge because somebody who had full awareness that you couldn't build one of these would say that's a de facto prohibition. It's not on its face, it's not, but, it's a, but you're not doing that. You're allowing okay. uses as as elsewhere. Other, so I don't have as much concern. Okay. Could somebody still challenge it? I suppose if the other available locations were so minimal or so few or, or so infrequent or, 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 or sparse that they would argue that this is essentially still a de facto prohibition. I don't believe it to be, knowing what I know about your other districts and the fact that you've broken out these types of uses and allowed different uses in different districts. I think you've provided enough of a menu here for a potential okay. cultivator, a potential retailer to have other options, um, but your point's well taken. I guess I'd also like to say we're doing this as a zoning bylaw for the long term and if other things change, then we don't have to go back and change our bylaws. If, if, if it's not allowed in that zone because of other federal rules and regulations, it's fine. It can't be allowed there, but it doesn't mean we can't zone for it. Does that, that make sense? Well, yeah. I, I, the, the terminology Adam used, it, yeah. it's, it, he's not concerned with it being a de facto yeah, prohibition. No, no. That was my... Right. So, and, so since we're on this topic, Paul is here, and do you want to say something else about that? But you get what we're saying, Paul, is that it, it, even if it's not allowed there, we can still zone for it. I, I never said you could, you know, we're no. guilty by the fact you created the, mar the medical marijuana over overlay district. I get it. But understand. Oh, thank here. you. I, since we last met, or since I was last here, I had several conversations with the uh, Department of Housing and Community Development down in Boston. They won't weigh in on this. They say each each edict has its own rules and regulations, and understandable. So I explained to her what we had done. We had council. Council weighed in. Council had, we had, uh, as part of the, uh, the updated business, um, the, the, as our, our business, uh, business plan, that we took a 40-year-old, uh, our uh, uh, charter, not charter, but our, our business plan, and updated it at town meeting and had it approved to allow also commercial development she said that um, we were doing the best practice. We have council. We keep these rules and regulations for the park updated on a regular basis. Every two years when we do invoicing um, to, the, uh, to, the, to the property owners of the park uh, for uh, tenant fees, administrative fees, uh, for the expenses incurred by DDIC, um, they, they get an updated um, Plan. Yeah. So, so I understand that. It, it's part of the overlay. Fine. You want to put us in there. That's fine. But just understand. And like yeah. I say, you've got it. We got it. I just, yeah. it is what it is. Good. Um, Everybody's good with that, I think. Yeah. You know. So 
I just, you. I just, the last time I was here, I didn't share that with you. So if you could, oh, okay. uh, yeah, you can, you can keep that. And like I say, that's, uh, it just says you got to follow, but that's a document every two, you know, and, and, and it's very laws. clear as soon as you see the federal, exactly. I but, get it. Right. But we're saying that's great. Everybody understands that. Right. But it's I, you know, separate I, issue I, from what we're, I, you know, I hate like anything to muck things up, but unfortunately it's in, the, we're in the overlay. So whatever you need to do, however you can tell someone, because someone can come into the park and say, Hey, I'd like to do this. Fine. Come in, meet with us. We're going to hand you this right. and say, so you can't do it. You okay. know, I, I don't know where else you can drive the bus, but I, I'm getting the impression because of the fact we do have it appears to be other alternatives, land and, and what have you, to do cultivation. You know, then so be it. Um, it's not like we're discriminating or, right. or uh, telling we, someone we no, it. you can't. I think we're good. In. So, anyways, thank you. Thank you. Paul. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else? So the side, uh, side and rear setbacks is what we had talked about, so you got that in there. Um, we have the social consumption is prohibited. That's, that's the last item, but it stands alone there. Um, and that, you, you're fine with that. That's, that's not gonna create any problem, right? Do we think that 25 feet is sufficient? We talked a lot about it I know. last meeting. I oh, know. I paced it out when I got home. <laughs> I'm not so good with these things. Well, it's not sufficient, but... What do you think would be good? 500 feet. I haven't paced that. That sounds like a football field. It's more than a football Similar. field. That's only football. It's only 300 feet. <laughs> Exactly. So, um, Again, it, 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 we talked about part of the special permit is that it can't have an impact on the neighbors. So, I guess that's um, what I'm saying. It's a, that's the 25 feet. This, that's a minimum kind of thing, yeah. yeah. So, let me just get anything else up here. Any other? So, between 25 feet and 500 feet, Max, something in between there? <laughs> I mean, what is, I'm just trying to, I'm getting us, I'm trying to get a sense for this. It's, it's. Because we went with 25, because that was, that was. It's, well, it's more than what's, yeah, it's we, more, we right, right, right. Yeah. It's a, I think we looked at. Uh, I know, I just paced it out when I got home. I was like, oh. Well, we just had a proposal in front of us for solar farm. No setbacks. Hundred, excuse me, 100 feet. Right, right, right. So, right. I guess. In That's your what mind, I'm thinking. What, what, what in my is, mind, I'm thinking. I, I know. So which one's more detrimental? Right. That's why. Why not go with? Uh, so I, I'm just. I'm telling you. When I got home, I was like, 25 feet. Gosh, that's a lot closer than I thought. That's all. Just saying. I don't work with these things. I work with. I know, know one of the. Verbs. I know one of the examples that came up was if there's a farmer that already has existing greenhouses that's close to their plot line, and they wanted to use that. Mm -hmm. What did they do? Mm -hmm. um, Buy the neighbor's place. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, should we be zoning it? We'd be zoning the neighbors into a corner. We'd be, yeah. That's, I guess that's I'm just saying that was yeah. a thing that came up. So it that's how we, up. we, we, we came sure. up with 25 feet last time. I'm not sure how, but. Right. We're kind of like grabbed a number. So I, well, I we, guess, I, and when you're talking about a residential agricultural area, then, and you're talking about um, permitting, you know, you've got a lot of safeguards. But when you're talking about residential agriculture, there's not a lot of safeguards, right? So. Well, yeah, and the neighbor that may have an issue with what's happening isn't going to have the funds to fight this, like the person. Well, yeah. They're not going to have the resources to fight the planning oh, board uh -huh. or whomever. As well, they don't the fight the plan planning board. Well. Uh, I mean, when to, there's to, a special permit comes before us and we have abutters, we listen to the abutters. That, you, you would hope that would be the case. <laughs> so I think part of it is, yeah, C, C2 is 25 feet. I think that's what we could grab it off of that. Yeah. That's why. As I remember, the discussion just, was, about, was about several things, safety, security, and, and odor, and it sounded like everybody was talking about doing greenhouses anyway, so... So those, those things were then taken care of, I believe, but maybe I'm wrong. 
I don't know. We had a comment? Yep. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm Dick Evans, and I'm here on behalf of uh, Pioneer Gardens. Um, I want to speak to the setback requirement. Uh, I don't think there's any surprise that the, the Pioneer Gardens does wish to be uh, eligible to convert to a, a cultivation operation, if they're eligible. Um, one of their the buildings is close to a property line within 25 feet. Um, it was my understanding from our last meeting that the purpose of the 25-foot setback was, was with regard to odor, and also you were talking about open cultivation, outdoor cultivation. Um, that may make sense in the case of open cultivation. But I'd like to suggest a couple of small changes to this section. One would be to have it apply to new construction and or have it apply to outdoor cultivation only. I think that would, that would remedy our problem and probably not, it would also satisfy the needs of, of the town as you've identified them. So I'd ask you to consider that. Make, apply this to new construction or only to, to uh, outdoor cultivation. Hmm. That Sounds like spot zoning to me. What's that, Max? Sounds like spot zoning to me. We're, right. We're, we specifically we're zoning zone to for... a particular plot of land. Well, I am describing the circumstances there. Yeah. It would be most awkward if... Uh, I don't know if it's spot zoning. That's more... That's favoring. Well, like we're, we're talking about working with existing an existing situation that we know in our head. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I, I feel you. But I don't know that that's what we call spot zoning. Well, you're, you're writing the rules to fit a situation. Right. Well, one of the, I think part of the reason why we got involved in this is that if there are farmers in town that could convert to this and it would be okay for the town and for them, then we wanted to zone for it. Mm -hmm. And we'd rather have you existing know. farmers then. Right, we'd rather have existing farmers than have a new company come in and build a building right on someone's plot line. I think, you know, I, and, and I, it might have been you who talked about the odor. It doesn't matter if it's 25 feet or 50 or 100. Is, uh, you know, odor yeah. moves, depending yeah. upon the wind anyway. So that's, he can, the whole outdoor thing is a whole other question. But, uh, yeah. um, and I don't disagree about separating open cultivation out, and I thought we, I think we should talk about that. Right, but that, again, it was, I kind of keep going back to the special permit, and if, it, if it's bad for the neighborhood, and if there's an odor, then you don't do it. That comes under the special permit. But how do you discriminate between one odor and another odor? And I think, you know, Jay was here. He pointed out that dairy farming is equally stinky. And they have some right to farm. So right. it's different. No, and absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not. So there's some differences <laughs> there. Of that. Yeah. Um, silage is worse. Uh. Oh, I'm, I'm not averse to new construction restriction. Um, just because I feel like, I think that we don't want to, um, if you consider somebody coming in and buying a plot of land and building within 20, you know, that, that I don't think that's what we're, we're mean for. And if you're opening it to residential agricultural, then you're, that's an option. And I agree, it is a special permitting, but at the same time, you're going to start, you need to start making some restrictions on the, that residential agricultural area so that it isn't. Kind of like, well, we just didn't like the cut of your jib. We didn't think it was good for those neighbors. We think it's good for those neighbors, but not for these neighbors. And so, in, so in this bylaw, you could, we could say it's applicable or underlying zoning district, except that for new construction, the minimum side and rear setbacks for any establishment are 50 feet or something. We could just just. Is that that's a? I have to lock that out. When I is get that it. a? Yeah. Well, my, is that Adam? Is that um? Discriminatory in any way, or is that a would be a problem? So, the usual defense, or the best defense to a spot zoning allegation, is that you've got a valid planning purpose. That's mm -hmm. what the cases say. Mm -hmm. Those cases that have been successful in overcoming spot zoning have been where the municipality had a valid planning purpose to support the determination that it made, uh, and where it was not solely zoning to the benefit of a single or a limited number of property right. owners. Uh, I think that a couple of things possibly save you here if you craft it right, if you've got, if you've got the, the rationale and the rationale appears in your minutes and through a deliberative process like this. 
One is the fact that if you're addressing existing versus new facilities, there are, I suspect, enough existing greenhouses in Deerfield, enough um, properties where there are cultivation of crops today that could be converted that you're not really catering to a specific limited number of individuals trying to benefit them. Obviously, you've got one applicant and one applicant's counsel here speaking to you, but I suspect there are others in similar circumstances. Additionally, if you're talking about there being a planning purpose behind it, so for example, when you speak to differentiating between outdoor cultivation versus indoor cultivation, your purpose there may be that outdoor cultivation obviously has a different odor, presumably, than indoor cultivation, which is subject to more stringent standards for maintaining odor, and of course, it's in an enclosed building. So there's a planning purpose there in terms of the impact on the neighborhood um, as a whole, especially a residential neighborhood. So I think you've got enough support here to potentially go in the direction that you're going, but you certainly need to, to paper the trail and make it clear that you're doing it for the right reasons. Where I take issue with that, John, um, having two different setbacks, is farmers get preferential treatment. They, there's a lot of rules and regs that they don't have to adhere to as farmers by right farmers. And now they've exercised those treatments and now they, you know, now they say, well, we should be able to roll it over for this, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. They should have to adhere as if it were a new construction starting from scratch. Because it's, you're they, saying they're not, because this isn't considered a right, farm they, product. They, they, they've uh, had special, you know, preferential treatments, which I've always <clears throat> been on board with, but you know, now, now they want to you know, have their cake and eat it too. So I disagree with having two separate setbacks, new construction, because this, in essence, is a new, new era, if you will, and... Well, it's not an agricultural crop. Right. So at some point, somebody got some preferential treatment as a farmer, and now they want to roll it over and say, well, we already had it. So that's, that's my take on it. There shouldn't yeah. be differences between new and existing it should all be treated as new be a change would it be a change of use too because it's cease being agriculture you know it's now it's pharmaceutical manufacturing no it's not pharmaceutical manufacturing it's still agriculture it's not agriculture for the purposes of section 48 section 3 mm -hmm. but it's still agriculture Trevor, you have some information to share? You want to get the microphone, or we could sure. bring it over to you? Trevor McDaniel, Select Board. I was just curious um, if, if, while you're debating, if you could, for the audience, explain the rationale behind the setback. What, what are we trying to achieve with it? So you don't infringe on your neighbors. neighbors. How, how would you infringe? I'm just curious. Well, just imagine you, know, you enjoy your pool, and then you go out tomorrow, and there's a 35-foot building in your backyard you can't enjoy the sunshine in the evening anymore or you can't see the sun in the morning you know that type of thing you know, just I think it would irritate people and I mean we it, I, I can see the dilemma in in this board's decision because whatever we decide is could possibly affect you know some people and um, you know they you could I can just hear the arguments now well I've lived here 25 years and I've always seen Sugarloaf Mountain now I'm looking at a blue steel wall you know, how come? And we say, well, we allow for, well, why didn't you think about this? Why didn't you say you had to be so close? I mean, it's one thing to have something over there you can look up, but if it's right here, you know, you have to do this. You know, and I what, see that. what's the setback for residential now for a house if you're going to build? Ten. Ten, ten feet. feet. Pretty so close. So anybody could build a ten-foot building anywhere, right? I mean, same thing. You're going to enjoy your pool. So that's how you, that's the rationale for doing a setback is just kind of view smell that you were talking about smell as well um i, I think though, lighting. having a house in your backyard is different than having yeah. a big steel building mm -hmm. or, or you, i don't know i mean I think is commercial different than residential it's commercial is 25 foot setback that's why we that's, that's, that's why i think went, why we kind of went with that yeah, yeah makes sense industrial is 30 feet you know so Thank it you. kind of gets a little yeah uh, now with the uh, cannabis control commissions Rules. I mean, is is does anybody know if the, these facilities are going to have to be fenced in, and how much room 
those fences take? You know, now is a 25 foot setback, does the fence need to be 25 feet away to leave room for a fire department to go around? If they need to be fenced, I'm assuming they have to be fenced. So now that fence is right on the property line? No. You, know, you know what I mean? No, it's from the edge of the, I think we looked at that last time. We've so got our building inspector yeah, might be sorry, able to share, some, uh, yeah. share something. It's a lot of, lot of up and down, sorry. In regards to setbacks, why couldn't you just come up with whatever setback you want and then if you have a pre-existing user, um, such as the farm that shows interest, they go before the ZBA and they get a variance on the setback. I mean, wouldn't that be logical? Again, I think people can, on a special permit, you could get a variance also, yeah, right? Yeah. But that'd be hard to do, having to show hardship for something to, how do you demonstrate hardship in a case like that? You haven't done it yet. Um, the variance, to rely on getting a variance is, 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 is tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be hard to get. You know, well, depends well, on where you are. <laughs> yeah, I didn't right. want to say that, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This town you, seems to be a little bit more lenient, giving out variances than others. So oh, well, that's good to hear. Yeah, we don't want to rely on it, though. Yeah. All right. Just a thought. So no, this is a good point. That, that is if a good point. It, because I think we want to zone against, like you say, a 35 foot is our height limit, a straight, ugly square mm -hmm. building. But if someone had a nice, slanted greenhouse there already, maybe that's not as bad. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so in other words, but, but we can't zone for both. So we're going to zone for one, and then you go for variance on the other, maybe. Exactly. So. Can another thing that kind of, as we talk about this, I mean, I, I might be wrong, but I've heard that in the production of marijuana, you have to leave grow lights on for a long time. So now people who enjoy the evening darkness and stuff are going to have a glowing purple thing in their backyard, too. I mean, you know, it's just, and I think there's got, a lot to think of. You've got a business that already has that. They already do that, right? What's that? A greenhouse business that already has that. Yeah, you know, then they, they, might. Then it, they do. Yeah. And then it's all set. Nobody, I mean, those neighbors mm -hmm. already know about that. Okay. So, so but I think, John, you bring up the point, and Pat, I don't know if you can help us on this, is that if we did a, the, the minimum setback, is that, is that the fence or is that the building? And no, if, if the fence is necessary well, to have fence. the building, oh, I thought we decided. then how does that? So Pat smith Furcox, we had looked at that last time, and the definition of structure is that it's anything that's permanently put into the ground. So I think the determination was that oh, right, a fence is arguably right. a structure. The fence was the edge. Right. Right. So that that's would be at the right. setback Okay, line. so that's what we're going by, that the fence yeah. is the edge. Right. So the fence would be the 25-foot setback. Right. And then do you know if in the CCC proposed regulations it talks about how far the fence has to be from the building? I don't believe no. it specifies that. Uh, because I, I agree with you, they might, you might have to have a, be able to get a truck around a it or something. Or you know, so I, I don't know, it would be interesting. There, as, as we've noted before, there are extensive security provisions. Right. Um, I don't recall there being a specific setback or requirement <coughs> for that, but certainly that would be part of a plan would be to allow emergency access. So I think if the fence has to be 25 feet off, that, that's Hi. pretty good, huh? Yeah, and then we, we, should spe we should specify that in the bylaw that, yeah. that, you know, it doesn't mean the building, it means yeah. fence, yeah, the fence permanent et cetera, structure. permanent structure. All right, so those are, uh, yeah, I mean, we had, like you said, we had three hours of discussion last time, and we ended up not making many changes, so I think. I don't know what, I, I think Everything that they're acceptable there. the way they are, yeah. you know. If you want to. With the I changes he's. With what changes? With, with the little things he's made. Yeah, with the rig. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just leave it like that, and we'll go forward. Um, Is it worthy to. Uh, um, Note that it's a permanent structure, 25 foot setback from the permanent structure. Is that going to be clear enough? Is that worthy of adding into? We this? add including fence or something. Including fences so, or, or auxiliary 
So certainly we can we can be clear. I mean, the challenge, of course, is that your bylaw isn't isn't clear in that respect to begin with, and so there are setbacks referenced throughout the bylaw in, in the dimensional standards section and then in self-contained sections, and it never says from the fence what we had concluded last time, and I forgot because it's unusual. Typically, fences are the exception to the rule. You have a very general definition of structure, but it doesn't say including fences. It does say including any any uh, uh, permanent improvement. So can we make that in this? If we're not clear elsewhere, and let's be clear here. Anything constructed or erected, the use of which required fixed location on the ground, and then it gives examples including X, Y, Z, which doesn't include fence in the definition. So certainly that can be interpreted to include fence, but the key word there being can be interpreted. Right. <laughs> and if you prefer to it to, for it to not be interpreted, you could not amend interpreted. your definition of structure to you, specifically include fences, and then that would be global. So if long as that, 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 that could cause different. more problems. Yes, I agree. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to say is that I, I agree with John. I think that could cause more problems and we could might lose something. However, part of this is because the um, state rigs require this fence yeah. as a part of the structure. So I would I would be in favor of adding it in to, to reflect that yeah. the state regulation puts this as a borderline as, as, as a part of the structure. And that's fine. We can make an amendment to it. We'd be on page five, number one at the top, where we identify the setback. We just be clear that, that setback is measured from, yeah. you know, any, uh, any permanent improvement, including any fence required by the applicable regulations. If a homeowner builds a home, but they've decided to put a fence in between, we haven't gone around and said, oh, you're m measuring from this fence. But, you know, we haven't done a lot of that one. No. I'm sure, not sure we want to jump onto that no. bandwagon. Right. Well, no, because I think currently no. it's like three feet or something for residential. No, but, but that's my point. Is yeah. that this is a different this is a different structure. This fence is required. But that's usually a picket fence, not a right. You know, who that's knows my point. what. That's sure. my point. The different definition of a fence in this case is it's part security of the fence. So it's yeah, it's a security yeah. fence. Yeah. It's a security it's a as opposed to somebody's household. And again, this is the mixing of residential with you know we're, we're commercial. With mm -hmm. commercial yeah. Is that the purpose of the fence for security? Mm -hmm. According, not for our purpose, for the CCC regulations. Well, how are the CCC regulations insufficient? How are they what? Insufficient. They're not insufficient. No. That's then not why do we need to supplement them? We're just saying we're, we're, we're saying that the fence count as the 25 foot. If it's in a residential right. area, we do not legislate people's fences. If I'm going to put a fence between no. here and there, I, I, we don't go around and make sure that that fence is 10 feet off of the property line, per se. I mean, a big fence, and somebody comes to us, and we have to decide that we're going to make a new legislation like that. But this is this is one of those issues of merging commercial issues with, with, and this is what farmers and, for instance, that that we're all, they're always working through these things, driving behind. Uh, so what you're requiring, in addition to the CCC security regulations, no, you're no, not shaking your head, you're not requiring anything. No. I'm not requiring anything. I'm no. just saying that this the is setback back from the fence. The setback from the fence is 25 feet. So if there is a fence, then the setback is measured not from the property line, but from the fence. No, from no, the fence. The, from the property, property line, line to, to the, the fence. fence. So you're requiring a 25-foot setback from the property line to, to the, the fence, fence, and then another 25 feet to the... No, yeah. that's yeah. whatever they want to, you know. They that's CCC. Be, they can touch. That's, that's, they can do whatever yeah, they want. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Are you requiring a fence? No, the state is... Actually, as far as we know, the, the state security is so, requiring so I, some security. Yeah, yeah I, I wasn't quite done because I, I want to ask. I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm. I'm just not sure I'm entirely clear on on everything that's been raised so far concerning existing versus new, concerning outdoor versus indoor cultivation. Yes. We're speaking about a fence now. Fences are required as a security protocol for outdoor cultivation because otherwise somebody could walk off the road and onto your. I get it. Okay. I see, I see, I see. If you're right. dealing with an indoor greenhouse, well. Are we still measuring a 25-foot setback? Because now you've got that building 25 feet from the property boundary, the right. same location that the That's fence different. would be. Yeah. yeah, I think it should be the same. Yeah, same. yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. We have not separated. I think, I think it's probably you can only be heard if you're up on a by the people on yeah, TV. Uh, yeah, sorry, actually, I'm not sorry. That's the way it is. I think this whole special permit thing you know, would be pretty much a common sense thing with the fencing. Um, around these properties. I mean, you're, if you're going to put this out in different zones, it's going to be on a case-by-case -case issue. You're not going to put this thing in a bunch of residential properties. And it's a common sense thing, a special permitting process. 
So I think the best um, way to do it would be on a case-by-case -case basis. Some places may require a 25-foot setback for a fence, but some places may not. So it's all, I think it's all wrapped around a special permitting. I mean, every, different, every case is going to be different with this thing. I totally mm -hmm. agree, but the problem, we need to protect ourselves a little bit from that. What's common sense to John, believe me, is not necessarily always common sense to me. So we need to protect ourselves. And then, ourselves. then I've heard that before. <laughs> you know, then you get the issue of you put a fence 25 foot setback, and who takes care of that 25 feet between the neighbor and that fence? And then you get a, a weed mess. Right. And that's eyesore. So it's, I mean, I think it should be like wrapped in a, the, uh, yes. so into the special permit but thing all the way. We're counting a lot on the special permitting. But the more you leave, leave it up to the discretion of a board with certain things, like a permanent part of the structure, I mean, there's more room for favoritism and nepotism. And if you've got 10 neighbors come in, you're going to build this thing next to a bunch of houses, it ain't going to go. I mean, it's, it's just, you ain't going to let it happen. You guys will not do that to this town. I mean, no, it's, it's, very, it's that simple. Well, one of the things that I think of about fences and stuff like that, to, to your point, Greg, is that I don't like to be involved with too many things that are very arbitrary. You know, if you have a rule that you say is case by case, and so we don't make you put up a fence, but we make Max, and Max says, well, why? You know, right. why? He, you didn't make him do it, but now you make him. Well, you know, you're this, uh, we think this is a little bit... When you take those type of arbitrary decisions, they live next to Kip. That's that's what they need to live next to me. You know, <laughs> I, I think when, when when you have an arbitrary uh, decision like that, it becomes more difficult to enforce. I don't know. So don't disagree with you. I agree with. But it's I a whole lot of common sense here. It's not. It's yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you 25 feet, five feet. It's going depending on where it's going to be, <clears throat> place and time, mm -hmm. um, and you guys, um, you guys will make the right decision. I'm sure. And in the, again, the special permit it says, in view of particular characteristics of the site and of the proposed proposal in relationship to that site. So you, each site is exactly. it's a site by site basis. And it's yeah. a common sense decision, special yeah. permit on a planning board. You might want to put one right on the property line, yeah. depending on where you're at. The building might be, you know, if it's in a situation where you've got neighbors around, you might say, you know what, we're going to go 50 feet back here because it makes sense. Hmm. But some situations are going to be cut and dry, 25 feet, 20 feet. It's out in the middle of nowhere. It could be in the middle of a field where there's no neighbors. So yeah, I take all that. That change, though, Greg, because uh, if you don't own that piece of property, then there could be houses there two years from now. So you're going to think of the future, too. So Well, that's know. all part of the planning board's decision on making these decisions. You have to look at these properties and use your common sense to figure out if it belongs there. I mean, it's, very, it's not that hard. I mean, you look around, a lot of these, pre, if you've got a certain piece of property that's got, um, you know, that goes back to having a four or five acre parcel. You have a one acre parcel, you get all these setbacks, you, and nobody's going to build one of these things on a one acre piece of land. That's right. out the yeah. window, just forget right. about it. Right. 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 I mean, you need several acres of land to do this. Right. And there's not many tracks in town that are going to have several acres of land that are already under the federal um, uh, APR. Yeah. Can't do it. So, I mean, this isn't easy anywhere in town. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to happen around a bunch of houses. I mean, mm -hmm. if it does, it's already there. It, the neighbors going to have to be there. You guys know the drill. It, it, it'd be very interesting to see one of these facilities, uh, a greenhouse, already in operation. See it, you know, what it looks like during the day, what it looks like at night, and all this stuff. You want to have a guy tell you all about it? He's sitting right there. Joe Kachuri from Harvest. Well, a picture's worth a thousand words. <laughs> um, I've been at these facilities and I've seen them. Greenhouse is great. Yes, yeah. I've been through the whole process. I've yeah. seen the whole we're thing. Where state or where? Arizona. Oh, yeah. Um, went through the whole thing, checked it all out. Um, odor thing, no odor outside. I never smelled the thing pulled yeah, up. It's in the greenhouses. In the, the greenhouses. Yeah. Um, at the time, uh, there was no out there, no out there grow, it was already harvested. Never smelt anything coming up to the greenhouses, but he can tell you all there is to know about it because I'm just a, I'm just interest person, interested person in this thing, so I've been just checking it all out. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if you guys want any real information, uh, Joe's a very honest, straightforward person. Um, he's not, um, won't embellish anything, he'll give you the straight, straight answers. So, if you guys want to hear from him, he's here. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. I tend to agree with Rachel about the setback. 25 feet is pretty close, I think, personally, but. 
When we have a special permit, so so say we're granting a special permit, what are what are our guide? What, what are, you know, that's what I want to go through. I know, I know, I know. I'm into it. Every anything we want. I mean, it's anything we the want. neighborhood characteristic. Um, it's the, the the light at night. Social economic. You know, social economics. If you're a good guy. No, the, no, there's no I mean, good guy. There's no good guy in here. It's, it's, uh, oh, there's not. But no. it's, um, <laughs> I've heard that before. But it's, it's a neighborhood characteristic. So if it's all houses, then you don't add a big, okay, a big warehouse. Time. You know, that's that's what we're saying. So it's pretty clear. Um, <clears throat> noise and light and smell; those are all things that you look at. Yeah. And the special and the site plan review is a whole other list of questions. So you gotta yeah. you're doing both. And then stormwater. Now Greg brought Storm. up a point with the APR land. Um, I would consider what Paul talked about, Paul Shesky from the uh, Plant Industrial District. I mean, I would consider that APR land because it's got that federal bylaw. What, so what's to say that people won't be growing on APR land? You, you know what I mean? So well, I think we really don't know. This isn't an agricultural product, so I think it's not, it wouldn't fit into that. It's prohibited. Well, it's prohibited on APR land. Yeah, but I asked that question the other, last time, and Jay answered that. It depends when you APR your land. There's different well, that was for sod specifically. I don't know for if it's sod, for sod, but it, it, it could really it could roll over for marijuana as that's well. He didn't specify one way or the other. He just do we, it depends. Do we know in this case in Massachusetts? Are we sure it's prohibited. In the old, in the original APRs, you could do sod. In the new APRs, you cannot do sod. It, all, I'm asking about marijuana. Yes, yes. so but that's in what James. All APRs, Cannot do uh, marijuana because marijuana is not considered an agricultural product. Okay. It has to be an agricultural use. All right. Are we? So you ready to make a motion? You were, yeah. you were getting close. Yep. <laughs> I make a motion that we accept the draft um, marijuana zoning uh, bylaws as they are. That's so you're saying as they are without the 25 foot setback? Oh, it has no, 25 foot. It has 25. It, 25. it does. Yep. But 25 measured from a fence, which measured is a point of clarity. Right. right. Okay. Do we have a second? Not, then that, the offense suggesting that we're not making any real distinction between open cultivate. Go ahead. Sorry. Somebody want to second it? So can... I'll second it. There you go. Any discussion? And I'd like to say that I think basically what we're voting for is to bring this to a public hearing, right. correct? Really? Correct. So, yes. Okay. So Any? we're voting to bring it to a public hearing. Right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. That's all we can do. And then the public hearing, it goes onto the warrant. We don't make a decision on this. We just, right, we're we just have making to have a, our public hearing yeah. prior to right. going so, so right. to town meeting. Good question, John. So at the public hearing, hopefully there will be more people, just common okay. citizens. Yeah. And we get a positive feedback, we would go forward, right? Then it goes on to the warrant. Right. right. So what if we got a negative feedback? What would happen then? Then That's we could point. make changes there that we think is what people want. Or but only we in think. a certain type. That can't well, that the if they're major, then I guess we'd have to go through the process again. Yeah. They, they've, they have to be within the four corners of the article as published. You need to be sure that you've given adequate notice. You've got a, quite a bit of leeway there in terms of modifications that are made. But if you were to decide, for example, that as a consequence of the feedback you receive at the public hearing, you want to allow marijuana establishments in every zoning district and in 50% of the zoning districts by right, yeah, that'll be outside of the scope of what you've published. <laughs> so you need to republish. But if it comes down to tweaking a provision here, tweaking a provision there, modifying setbacks a bit, that's all within the four corners of what will be published if this version is what's published. Mr. Chairman, if I might add, though we have, we've readjusted our timeline given you know, that we've been having these discussions ongoing, um, but we still have scheduled the public hearing two days before the date uh, that the town meeting warrant would need to be finalized. So while that's very short, it would allow you to make some final changes prior to its showing up on the warrant. Thank you. What's that date? Yeah, what is that date? Uh, the, the public hearing that we've talked about the date would be the 26th of March. So we're in the middle of a, um, of a vote 
if we could just. Yeah, stick. I just wanted to let you I know, know that. Just but I just. <laughs> you want to stick with a vote? You yeah, know, and I we need more, to stick I have to. I more of these worksheets I can hand out to all of you. Well, too, thank you. Those timelines when we get to that point. Any um, other discussion? All those in favor of moving this on to the public hearing? Aye. 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 Oppose? And abstain. So we got a four. Four three zero. Three zero. <clears throat> so then, um, so Adam, you talked earlier that um, so this will move on to a public hearing, and then you mentioned that there was other potential bylaws. Now, before you do that, what how, you remind me why you wrote these up. As I mentioned earlier, I was contacted by member of the board, and there were statements made at the previous meeting that there was an interest to present voters with options, to give you the option, give the voters either the option of adopting a marijuana bylaw that would zone for marijuana, allow it in some districts, marijuana establishments, allow them in some districts and disallow them in others, and then providing them also with an option to prohibit marijuana within the town of Deerfield. That can't be done because of the manner in which the legislation was crafted, other than with really a two-part test. First is the adoption of bylaws to that effect, and the second is a referendum vote. A referendum vote would be a true vote uh, on the ballot that voters of, of Deerfield would need to approve because you were a yes community that voted yes on question four back in late 2016. So you require both a general bylaw and a zoning bylaw because of the fact that marijuana is sort of right on the fence here between uh, a substance that needs to be regulated in a general sense, but also something that has uh, zoning implications in terms of where the establishments are permitted, where they can be located. Um, so it needs to be addressed in both ways if there's going to be a prohibition. I've seen this done in all sorts of forms. I've seen simple statements included, one sentence statements included in your general bylaws and in your zoning bylaws that would say marijuana establishments are prohibited. Um, it sort of depends upon the manner in which your bylaws are crafted. With respect to your uh, zoning bylaws, you've got a use table and you've got a statement that precedes your use table that says any use that's not explicitly allowed is prohibited. So one could argue that that in and of itself is a sufficient prohibition. Um, not really as clear as it could be. I think the clearer route is to include an item in your table of use regulations for marijuana establishment and just say no across the board to make it very clear it's a prohibited use. You've done that in one other instance in your bylaw. Um, and then, so that's what I proposed. It would be including it in your, in your bylaw, much the same as we had done in the document that you just voted, where we've allowed different types of establishments in different districts, except it would be no's across the board. And I have a footnote that simply says that per the statute, the marijuana establishments would be prohibited in any district within the town of Deerfield, and then specifically saying that the prohibition is effective only upon the passage by the voters um, of that prohibition at a regular or special election. So even if the bylaw gets adopted without the second step in the process, right. it's of no effect. And then essentially, I've done the same thing in the first part of the document that I just handed you, a little lengthier, it's a four-part section within your general bylaws entitled marijuana establishment that provides for that same prohibition using the exact same language I just quoted, uh, more or less. Um, and then providing for an enforcement process because you need a manner of enforcement of a general bylaw, a clarification that medical marijuana would be accepted, and uh, a clarification, again, of the effective date, the effective date being the date of the vote by the voters that would uh, put into effect a, a prohibition under the statute. Um, and then lastly, just for your information, um, I provided uh, a ballot question at the very end showing you with, uh, what, the, what the ballot question would have to be, uh, and this is dictated directly by the statute. Simple statement, shall the town adopt the following bylaws, and then you are required to do two things by statute. The first is have town council prepare a summary of the bylaw, a fair and concise summary as they call it, uh, and uh, that needs to be followed by the actual verbatim text of the bylaw, which is everything that precedes it on this, uh, on this handout. So it's a bit of a tedious process. They've made it that way on purpose for communities that voted yes, um, that to, to sort of undo that vote more or less within your town anyway. You've got to go through this two-step process. Um, so again, these are provided for your information, whether the board sees fit to pursue this or not. Um, you could, of course, advance um, for uh, inclusion on the warrant 
the articles themselves through the usual process, the same process that you're following with respect to the bylaw that you just voted um, to advance to a public hearing and eventually to, to the warrant. Um, you have less say over the, the ballot question. The ballot question is a matter for the discretion of the selectmen. The selectmen, uh, the, the uh, select board can uh, place that ballot question on a ballot if they so choose. So, so just to get, get back procedurally, I was a little unclear that did, that did the select board ask to write this up? No, I did. No, member of your board did. All right. I did. Because I don't remember, and I just checked the minutes, I don't remember us asking that. And usually when we ask the council to do something, it's either a vote of the board or we check with the town administrator, too, that it's usually not an individual planning board member can go to the town council uh, and ask them to do something. So I, this back, no, I'm just Back in clarifying. January, it was voted. To, it, was, it was voted by the board back in January. To give us the three options. To do what? To give us the to three, give options. three options. And yeah. to commission the town council to, to do so? The, the board voted to ask for three options. Right. I don't know who was asked to do it, okay. but it was it was voted by the board. So I just want to say that because it was in the minutes. I appreciate that. Yeah. I just I just this is more just a procedural thing. I just want to be yeah. careful it doesn't get out of control because I've been. Sure. It costs money to the town when you get the town council to do something, and usually we go through the town administrator. So I wasn't sure if that. I, I want to make sure we're following sort of town the, procedures. Yes, and, and the reason for that is because I understood that if that there's a time deadline approaching. And that if we were to get the three options, I just wanted to make sure that they were all available so there would be a clear choice. All right. That's all. I also like it, I'll just make this sort of statement, is that when we talk about things as a planning board during a, a meeting that has been posted, we all talk about things. Mm -hmm. And then once the meeting closes, we don't go talk about other things and make other decisions. I didn't. So I just want to... We voted on it, and that's the way it was. And I just wanted to make sure that Adam prepared for everything that we voted for. All right, that wasn't my understanding, so. So we're the, we're the planning board, so we would look at the zoning bylaws would be the one that That's we correct. would look at. So does anybody have any, any comments on what's been presented? So. Well, if we're, if we're commenting on it and there hasn't been a, a vote to, uh, to, to move it, and nobody's moved it, the discussion's kind of moved at this point until you decide that somebody's going to move it and second it. Well, no, just like before, we we talk about it and then someone well, that, moves it, seconds it, and well, that's, we see that's, if there's any more discussion. typically backwards, though, from where it should be. You should either vote it and then discuss it, or why discuss it if you're not going to vote it? You know? well, I haven't even read it yet, so. No, no. I can't vote on it until I read it. No, I'm not talking about you can't read this. Uh, never mind. <laughs> So, I mean, this is a draft, so what we're talking about is do we want to do anything else with this draft before we move it to if go to nobody, a public If nobody wants to move this uh, and yeah. second it, why bother with it? Oh, okay. That's the whole point. I, I believe that's how it's supposed to be done, but I'm not sure. All right. Well, I'll move to move forward with the opt-out option. But if, if that's, I mean, if that makes, if that satisfies Paul, I mean. No, no, it's not me. It's, it. it's the way that I understood how uh, things worked. Can I offer a point of clarity maybe? Yes. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're in informational meetings. This is the third informational meeting we've had. Yeah. The purpose of these meetings is just to discuss generally the regulation of marijuana in the town of Deerfield, however that may occur, whether it be through prohibition, whether it be through appropriate regulation. I apologize to you, Mr. Chairman, if I uh, didn't follow proper protocol. Um, when, when a member of the board contacted me, I remember the conversations we'd had as part of these informational meetings yeah. and the desire to place options before the, the voters, and I presume that that was the intent of the board to at least have the language prepared. Whether you choose to proceed with it is up to you, but I think you can proceed to discuss it tonight if that's your desire, whether you take the same vote you took a moment ago to take it to the next step to conduct a public hearing on the zoning article. That's a different question. That requires a vote a second and yeah. a vote of the entire okay. planning board. Mm -hmm. So basically, the second section here is the one that would go yeah, in the bylaws, that's we right? Remember. That's what we're that, looking that's at. That's correct. Beginning on the bottom of the first page and onto the second page.
No, oh, again, any comments? No. You want to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to give the uh, people of the town of Deerfield the opt-out option um, and move forward with this opt-out uh, prohib prohibition bylaw. I'm not sure it says anywhere about opt-out, but it would basically say It'd be it's a not allowed prohibition. Any, right? Marijuana establishments are not allowed in any zone. Correct. Any second? I'll second it. Further discussion? So here's my question. So we're voting to do what? I still don't follow. So the first thing would be to take this to the, so that would be to bring this to the public hearing. It would have, have to go to the public hearing. hearing. On this, cha on okay. this uh, change in bylaws, basically. On a change in bylaws. Well, it's an, you're adding a bylaw. We're making a change to our bylaws, yes. So, but in other words, our job is to change the bylaws. Yes. 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 But we can't change the bylaws unless there's a, there's a, a vote. Right. There's a, right. a multi-stage. This right. is a multi-stage. So we're this is just, just the first step of it. Right. Yeah. So we just have to say. We have to move it forward. In we order. have to move it forward just in the event. So we have both hands out, like to catch whichever. Right. Thing. I guess. Falls. See, but basically, right? I, what I see is that if the public really wants it, they're going to vote this down at the town meeting. Right. So if it's there, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, no, it's in the voters' hands. Is it's what in it the comes voters' down hands to. then. So it's, it was a choice. That's what. Yeah, if the it. voters say no to this, then you move on to the other one. And can you remind us how the the order would go? Sure. So it it, it, it gets to be very challenging. Let me let me talk first yeah. about where you are in the process because yeah, yeah, that yeah. might might simplify things. So you just voted a moment ago on a seven-page zoning amendment that mm -hmm. creates new zoning for marijuana establishments. Mm -hmm. What you're voting on now, potentially, is an equivalent amendment in lieu of the amendment that you just voted that would make one simple line item change to your zoning bylaw that would prohibit these establishments townwide. So scrap the seven pages that you just voted right. to proceed. So it's not like both hands out and catch, which for well, each catch. Well, so it's, here's, so, so th this is where we are now. Right now it's both hands out as of tonight. If you vote yay to advance this bylaw as well, it's both hands out. Right. Now we get to the public hearing on the 26th. Right. You've got to take public input and you've got to make a recommendation on each of these bylaws. That can be a bit challenging given that you're going to have to explain your recommendation on town meeting floor as to why you might be recommending two bylaws, one of which allows it and one of which prohibits right. it? Are you going to recommend one and not recommend the other? Right. You also have to recognize that even if you recommend both, and maybe you give an explanation at town meeting that your basis for recommending both is to give the voters the option, there's a possibility that, let's say that the zoning, the, the, the zoning fails, the, the regulation, the seven pages you just voted, but the prohibition passes but then it doesn't pass at the ballot box or never gets on the ballot box because the selectmen don't put it there. Now there's no prohibition. Right. And you don't have any zoning in place right. for these facilities. So now you're in a worse position Much than worse. you could potentially be in because you haven't zoned to regulate it in any way. So it's, you can only control so much of the process because right. you can't control the town meeting vote and right. you can't control what gets on, you as a planning board can't control can't what control gets onto the ballot. Out. That's the challenge. And our ballot vote is after Right. Town meeting. That's correct. correct. Who, if the town meeting right. will say the bylaw thing we'll passes see. and then at the ballot vote, the prohibition passes, what would happen? Which bylaw passes at town meeting? The prohibition bylaw? No, no, not the, the town meeting. The seven page bylaw? Yes. Okay. We would structure it such that the prohibition would supersede the regulation the prohibition would and, and we would structure the the town meeting warrant in such a way that it was phrased that you know in in the event that he, even in the event that the seven page bylaw passes which would likely be the first of the of the articles in the warrant or at least precede the article that is the prohibition the prohibition would essentially negate what you what the town meeting had just adopted and would be of greater force and effect and would prohibit prohibit the use townwide. We'd have to structure it that way. So that would be an okay situation and you could have a yes vote on everything and we know what the outcome would be. It gets trickier if you're talking about a no vote on everything or a, a no vote on one and a yes vote on the other depending upon the sequence in which they occur. It's challenging to give the voters options because it's not all occurring at once. You've got a vote at town meeting, you've got a vote at the ballot box. 
um, and you are giving them alternatives. They could choose neither. I think that it's, and this is why I, I, I believe in a choice, because you know, I'm only one member of this community. I think that you could explain to the voters how important it is to pass those seven page, page regulations, regardless of how they feel, because you, we want to protect the community. And then you, you can go forward and give the people the choice. The second um, prohibition ballot might not even pass, and that would be the end of it. If it did pass, then it would be up to the ballot type question to, for the communities to decide what they wanted to do. That's, you know, I, I think it would be a fairly simple thing to explain to people. So the question is that this article just complicates it. Right? No, it doesn't complicate it at all. This the zoning one does. Why does it complicate it? Because as he's saying, if you vote, well, how do you, how do you, no, how do you vote the, the, yes on this, both? The seven page article would come first. And we could speak that it's important that our community pass this one because we need to regulate the marijuana and this is the best that we've come up with. Oh, yeah. And therefore, we should pass it. The, the people vote and they pass us. Then someone else can come up or we can just say, look, at this is, if people, if our community really doesn't want to deal with the marijuana thing, then you can pass this, and, but it doesn't end there. You also have to show up at the ballot question next week and vote for the same thing. Because this, both of these could pass, and it would not pass at the ballot, and it still would be in four if we would have our seven-page one and not the right. prohibition. But am, am I clear? This, you have two articles on here. Yes, one, two, one's general, one zoning. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, so we could have the general zoning. We could have we could have the general bylaw. You need both. Both. Oh, you're saying you need both. Yeah. Well, is it one so. vote or two votes on this? Well, there's two articles, is that what you're saying? Yes, one, one on each. The, the Attorney General's office, and this just mm -hmm. goes to the fact that you're adopting this regulation in the midst of who knows what's going on with recreational marijuana. You've got regulations that aren't finalized yet. You've got new legislation. No interpretations have been made officially. So the Attorney General's office has recommended that where you are opting to mm -hmm. prohibit, because the language of the statute doesn't suggest you can do so in a zoning bylaw, it suggests it needs to be done in a general bylaw, the attorney general says you have to, at a minimum, do it in a general bylaw, but then you're not going to make reference to it in your zoning that marijuana <laughs> establishments are prohibited. You should, and right. so the attorney general's office says you ought to do you both. Have to. Right. Okay. In South Hadley, I think, didn't they put the zoning article to a ballot vote? They did the same thing that we're doing right now. They, they had the um, prohibition and back, backup um, right, zoning. Right, but did they... Did they have it like an article at town meeting? Yes, they had to have an article because at the state election, they, they were like, you know, whatever, 52, 48, whatever it might have been, so. Oh, see, so I similar similar vote to the, what we the, had. The zoning or the bylaws at a, like a ballot question also. If this town voted in the state election. No, I understand that, John. We, that we wouldn't have to go to the ballot. Right, right, I yeah. know that. Okay. You can't, you can't simply go to the ballot and bypass town meeting altogether. The legislation doesn't allow it. Oh, even for the, the zoning? Whether a yes or no town, you have okay. to go the route of a bylaw. Right. And then in, in addition, in a yes town, you've also got to go to the ballot box. They made it very complicated purposely. So it Imagine that. We read Jig all over again. Like, there's a vote, and then everybody revotes. Mm -hmm. So even a town that voted, just this is for my information, but even a town who voted against the proposition or the question for they're still going with one of these they still need a bylaw and that's they correct change. they, they can, can just decide well, we do want marijuana now and flip it around they could do whatever they'd like in a yeah, yeah. well, well the, the, the issue any community can zone and say yes we want it the question only relates to can you prohibit it right and so if you want to prohibit it if you were a no town you can prohibit it very simply right. the same way you'd prohibit any other use you adopt a zoning bylaw that prohibits it right however if you're a yes town then you have to go through this two-step process. Right. Adopt the bylaw that prohibits it, right. and then go to the ballot box. Right. Does anybody in the public have any comments on this prohibition bylaw? My, my only comment is that I don't it. All right. Anything else, board members? We've got a. Uh, we've got another hand up. I just want to you know. Yep. I'm just confused. You 
have it in front of you, there's a draft. You need to pay for it. You talked about all the different, you know, setbacks and what have you. People have already spoken. We're not voting on the Constitution anymore. We're not. Well, a lot We're of people, a lot of people, people voted to make marijuana legal. A, to make marijuana legal, not to see big business come in and, and make this huge, you know, tobacco industry type business out of it. I've heard people tell me that. People have told me that, so it's not just my interpretation. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'll just add that the theme for the election in 2016 was to uh, make uh, uh, legalize or regulate marijuana like alcohol. Alcohol is pretty big business. It wasn't because alcohol is a small mom and pop operation. It was called regulate like alcohol. So I think when people voted yes on question four in 2016, they voted to regulate alcohol like marijuana, I mean, uh, marijuana like alcohol. You can't make whiskey at your house. Yeah, you can. I, I don't believe you, you can make beer. I don't think you can make whiskey. You can't sell it. You can make all you want. Well, there's a first and a second, John. You got one more. Any other? Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah, one more. You can't make whiskey at your house. To sell. You can't make medical marijuana at your house. You can't make medical marijuana that helps people or any kind of marijuana that's controllable in your house. It's black market. It's here. It can be dangerous. So the motion in front of us and seconded is to uh, move this uh, articles about prohibition to a public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Oppose? Abstain? What was the vote? Got a 5 2. 5 2 0, it looked like. Well, oh, okay, yeah, five, that's two, the reverse six. kind of thing, right? Well, five in favor of it. Yeah. Two opposed. Yeah. So we'll move these two uh, to the public hearing. So let's set the date for the public hearing. Um, it's proposed to be March 26th, which is a what day is that? Monday. Monday, I believe. And that, Pat, will give us time, you think, with the new recorder regulations and everything to um, get uh, this advertised? Well, we would need, we're looking at having it published this Friday. So uh, we would need to get it to them by Wednesday. And I have uh, prepared a draft public hearing notice for your review tonight based on the original bylaw. We'd have to create one for the second bylaw as well. All right. Wendy, did you see any issues with that? Or? All right. All right. Anything else on? Um, so, the 26th at 6 o'clock public hearing? 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock? Could be a long one. Should we start at 6? 6. <laughs> it's, both, it's both of these articles. It's not just the prohibition, right? Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Both were approved to go to yeah. public hearing. I'll just split and do 6 30. <laughs> Just to confuse me. My brain only has two Well, then I'll only be a half an hour early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Just, what time? Yeah, time. Pick a time. I want credit for that. I don't care. Mm. I, 7 o'clock is more convenient for people. It just, it's going to take a long time to drop in. Well, I think it was just, I just don't want to be here until last, last time was unacceptable. So? If we start at 6, we'll be done by 10. 6. 6? Six? 6. I think so. Okay. 6 on the 26th. Thank you, Adam. Is that work for you? You'd, you'd be yeah, very useful to be here. Thank Pat, you, so you can help much, us with the... Because then so, Adam, you guys it, can work together. the board, we can work together yeah. to finalize those, those legal finalize notices the, on your behalf. Finalize the notice and then, um, and, and then help us afterwards to get it on the warrant because it'll have to move. We'll have to move quickly depending right. on what happens that night. Right. Sure. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, any other business? Wendy has something we'd love to hear about a position as a, a, a planning type well, person at the town that could help the planning board. 
I need say no more. I mean, that's why I, I'm glad to hear you say that because I'm meeting some resistance around it. Um, so I think you need to show your support for the position. Where do we need to put our show um, our support? Let the board know and let um, the finance committee know. All right. That I thought we've already made the case that we would save some. Uh, Who has made the, the case? The planning board. That we would save some money, a <laughs> little less money going well, to I'm the FERCOG. Well, I'm reporting that, but okay. you need to do that. I'm okay. reporting. I said, look, this came from others. This came from uh, building commissioner's office. This came from... Yeah. It's planning board, and, and I will add myself to that, having seen the need by all the boards, zoning, conservation, as well as planning board, for this kind of in-house help, and then the need to develop our, our commercial and industrial tax base as mm -hmm. best we can, and to serve the community better in a coordinated fashion when they walk in the door and need your services. Um, so what would it cost about? Uh, yeah, what is a... Was uh, it a part-time position you no, had? No, see, it, it kind of took on... I, I was sitting in to a lot of these meetings, and I was very much um, for having a planner, and I thought it was going to be a part-time position that somebody could, you know, come in and deal with our zone, all of our bylaws and guide applicants to all the right boards and stuff like that. And, you know, I know that wouldn't be a full-time thing, so they could always uh, delegate other times to, you know, look at other situations to help develop and get involved. Well, it's turned into pretty much not a full-time position, but one that's going to, I think it was going to be, what, 40 something thousand dollars? Or? Oh, the proposal and I, um, that I submitted to the select board and to the finance committee has it as a grade five uh, position on our compensation scale. Um, I'm saying, and this is what I said to the select board and the finance committee in the second night, was that I think to find somebody of uh, the ability, uh, knowledge, skill, <coughs> background, et cetera, to do this comprehensive job, it's, you could look at it as two different jobs, one community development, one planning, have the overview not just of planning and zoning, but conservation commission, because they, they have approached me um, saying, Steve Barrett has said, I want some help, and I realize a conservation agent is a distinct, he acknowledged a distinctly, distinctly different job, but he needs, he's taken on so much of the role of the administrative piece, he'd like someone else mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. So that's even newer from our former discussion about this, or previous discussions about this. At any rate, what I've talked about is 25 to 30 hours, um, step one to step three, and you know, I, I really am still with the step three. I'm not proposing to go beyond that at this point, despite what step we discussed three is earlier. A, a, a Sorry, day. yeah. So, so the actual the step one to step three, um, the range would be somewhere between um, forty nine thousand and fifty five thousand if it were full time um, at forty hours. That's so, the pay, correct? If it's full time, that was the pay. Right. Okay. And then you get the benefits are about another ten to twelve thousand dollars. Depends if they take benefits. But you get them. Mm. They, they would they would be eligible for benefits if they work twenty hours or more. Yeah. Um, and what I've explained is, if you want someone who's <coughs> going to come to the night meetings and get something done during the day, they're not going to work Sundays like me, and they're not you know I'm not going to expect that to happen. They have limited hours, um, so. It's going to take that amount of time to get the job done. Um, with Dick having stepped down from the commissioner and that length of and depth of knowledge and experience with the community mm -hmm. and real estate agents and builders and all of that, it was actually his idea. He's the one, at least that I'm aware of, who initiated this. Mm. I don't see, I've, I've kind of said their job is not to come and take minutes, but I don't see why they couldn't help in that, help you with that as well. Um, as long as you expect the minutes are your votes and the time you who was here and when you convened and when you adjourned without mm -hmm. going into lengthy lengthy descriptions of um, the discussion um, that sh should be something they could possibly handle but that could evolve I, I am not proposing that they need an assistant at this time so I mean, I, I'm I, already I, handling you know it's dispersed throughout our workforce yeah. thank you Pat Pat and I have talked at length yeah. about this as well. She's been an enormous resource to this town. Um, but from what people have come to me with, we need more than what, um, by virtue of Pat having other duties and working for the FERCOG, um, and not being able to really do community development work right. for us, mm -hmm. it's not really appropriate to ask. I mean, when I, 
so. know, we certainly have some things here, and we know that um, what do you call them? Clients or people coming sure. into the town could use yep. better service. Customers, probably. customer service. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yep. And when you look at other towns, you know, where the 5,000 population, certainly the ones that are seven or 8,000, certainly have, they have their own full time, I think. I'm thinking Montague and Orange and others like that. You know, if you're 1,000 population, then the FERCOG probably does, you know, can, can do a great job. But I just think like we're at a point where there's a lot going on here. And I feel like we're just, we can tread water, kind of, the planning board. <laughs> But obviously, we don't uh, we don't review things ahead of time. You know, we put our three hours in every month at the meeting. But uh, certainly, having some other support would be terrific. Housing. I mean, we talk about you know senior housing or affordable housing. That's the, that hasn't gone anywhere for years. And I think part of it is because there's just no one right. to move these things forward. Um, I'll just speak for myself. No. I would love another sort of professional partner in the building to work with on complete streets, yeah. senior housing, senior center, yeah. that kind of thing. And I think, you know, it's stuff that I have on my plate, but I would love to share with someone else and have someone else in on that effort. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, I have to say, starting at the bottom line with this position, you folks need the help, and I would like you to have it. Um, we have training opportunities. Keep reminding you, they're out there for you, but I don't see you signing up. Mm -hmm. Wednesday. Uh, gonna, no, it's Wednesday. snowed out. It's they, a new they moved it. They the, moved it already. Honestly, you're going to be in no, Jamaica no, or something. Already moved they moved it. Yeah. the 11th. Sorry, I oh, that's that's that is actually. I'm not sure that's a training that necessarily you were invited to, but yet yeah, they moved that. Yes, that went specific to the process of filing zoning uh, papers with the clerk's office and mm. what that happens after that. It's more the citizen planner training collaborative yeah. trainings and their big conference they have every year. Um, you know, it would be nice to get people. We can also sponsor trainings here. Um, but hopefully we can have someone who could do that training. That's something else I'd like, you know, them to do. They come with that kind of knowledge and experience that they can do that. I don't know what CPTC trainings FERCOG is hosting, but they have them, CPTC citizen planner training. Um, Just I, briefly, usually each fall we uh, handle two different seminars, and in years past, a number of you have come. The CPTC annual uh, workshop is coming up, their conference, which is an amazing yeah. opportunity to get trained. And I believe that's uh, upcoming Saturday. I think it's March 17th. You should all have gotten mailings on that. I would recommend and encourage you to go to that. It's a really wonderful opportunity to learn a lot, have talk with your colleagues around the state, share ideas and, and frustrations. And uh, I think that's, uh, I, I would definitely, I will send that, if you have not seen it, I will send it out to you, John, in the morning okay. so that people can sign okay. it. All right. So any, just, all I'm saying is do we if want you to want give our this position, support to this position, got to go to bat yeah. for it. The finance <laughs> committee, have they stated how they feel about this position? I think they're just, every, everything is concerned about money and the ongoing costs. So are they so. in favor of it or not? I don't know. As a, if I as a group, them, they. But I don't think that they were all that in favor of creating another thing. I know that there was a big discussion that they were looking for six to eight hundred thousand dollars to get the balance, the budget. So <clears throat> it's, it's going to be tight. Um, I um, and I think that was one of the big concerns: is adding another position. You know, we. I think uh, it's one of the few positions, though, that you can. It's an investment in, in, in make, bringing in more money. Yeah, that would be the argument I would make about it, that different from many other positions which are necessary and have to provide a service, mm -hmm. this one is focused on also de creating, expanding the tax base. And I, I'm not just saying that reflexively. I've seen it happen in other communities. I've worked with planners, community development folks. That is what it's about. Mm -hmm. So realistically, to get any sort of talent whatsoever, you're talking with the benefits 60,000 a year. Is that fair to say? Um, well, she's talking making it in a 20, if it's a 30 hour, three, four, three quarter position. It's, it's well, the benefits she said are paid after 20. Right, so, so you still have, so. To, well, first it depends if 40, they take the benefits. 50, 60, so um, it's, it's in the, between 50 and 60. It, yeah, the top, the top, yeah. with what I'm proposing, the top amount, if we went for 30 hours, grade three, 41,000 would be the salary. Right, plus bennies. Plus so, I mean, you got to figure that they're going to take yeah. the bennies and it's, um, and I want—I would like to leave it, as I said, to the select board and the 
Finance Committee, I'm still trying to get a sense of what the market is, if there is interest. I, I see, I get emails on different listservs, and there are other communities looking to share planners. But Hanson is a little bit far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I see them. We're kind of all over the edges of the state and so far. But that, that's a conversation that is out there. That is an interest. Other small communities are looking to do that. They don't. This is their first time also trying to mm. um, create a, have a, a planning position and to make it worthwhile, both to the community and um, the person. They're looking to share that. Um, I don't think they're. There's other interest in Franklin County right now. Wendy, do you but, know what, you know, like for instance, Hatfield has, do they have a planner, a full time planner? No. No, the smaller we, towns don't. It, that. Well, Hatfield's about the same, you know, if we could split something up with a town like Hatfield or. Oh, that will kind of share I mean, the cost, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Has anybody reached out to these towns at all? And said, I hey, have not. This is what we're thinking. I actually, I did submit on the, um, on the listserv saying that I, you know, we were looking as well, but I didn't get a response to. You know, that. I don't know what Hatfield Hadley, you know, does ha Hadley must have a planner, right? They don't. See. I think they did. I know they did years ago, but I'm not but sure not that currently. they do. They have a very long-serving, very active, with attorneys on board planning board, uh -huh. and a very active. Um, uh, building inspector, although I'm not sure if he's retired or not, but he was also very active in that way. Um, I consider Hadley our comparable community in many ways, so, um, but they also have major projects and they're looking at right now, so uh, mostly municipal projects. But this is I mean, this is it. If we're going to go forward this year or not, yeah. we got to go this route, and I don't think we can pair up with somebody. Could happen during the year. Um, I think in talking with Paul, who's left, but they would be interested in perhaps utilizing the services. Um, and can we dedicate any of our uh, the fee income from the planning board? I mean, we've got a bunch um, of money I think revolving the... fund money? I think so. I think you can. I mean, because I, I think obviously be... we don't want to raise our taxes and we want to watch the finances in town, but are there ways to Pull some well, the only thing is with the fees would be around us, so we can come up. Well, each of these, right, each of these solar, solar ones project. get more solar projects, three thousand dollars each. Well, <laughs> okay. especially for the chair on this board, it well, doesn't matter who it is. I mean, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of volunteer time, and it's just not fair. You know, John happens to be the chair now, and I know how much yeah. hard work he puts into it. Who else has been the chair? But no, I mean, because you do such a great job. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not, as, I don't think we're as efficient as we could be if we had someone I helping us. I agree. I, I, that's I, I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. He's not. I don't think anybody will disagree that it would be helpful, but yeah. you could have sort of respect the finance end of it also. Absolutely. Uh, well, maybe they could cut the budget somewhere. But that's why trying to figure out some money for it, and then came, would it, like when he says, a lot of good economic development work creates more tax revenue yeah, and it helps the town. It's necessarily going to really happen. You know, Hadley and here, if you look at their that Route 9 thing and there's a lot of commercial stuff going on there, I don't see that happening in Deerfield personally, but. I mean, could we truly keep it at a part-time position, less than 20 hours to start with and see where it goes? Um, I really believe in not setting something up for failure, and mm. I do think that would okay. be doing so. The wrong person. It's a question. That's yeah. who would and then the other thing, we, you talk about grants. Some, some are CDBG helps us finance right. some of the these positions in some Deerfield towns. The and but CDBG, we're just not in that level that not, would support. Uh, yeah, we can only get housing rehab at this point. Yeah. Haven't been able to get... Um, infrastructure money or senior center money, which many towns have yeah. because of our income. This town is a wealthy community on, in the demographics, despite many, that, huh? despite, <laughs> despite many people's experiences. Okay. We don't have any tax dollars to fund all our stuff. We're wealthy, but we're wealthy. You'll get another bill. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, my, I guess my position on it is I think we really need it, but at this point in time, this is I, I, this is this is the we've point. talked about it for years i think that's the thing i i know i know so we say we really want it and love it if the i finance think it committee could also find cut down on some of the legal services yep. as well i mean we again pat's been 
She's terrific. No, we've talked to her, and we, we <laughs> might cut, we might cut the money. Blessed, we have, you know, it goes to the fur cog, and she's okay with it. Yes, and she'll we find would still okay turn with to you. That. We would still she'll turn to you. She'll miss us, but yeah. You know. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I can't average, guarantee we'll you find somebody. So. A fur cog in, in a year's time. Well, what's what's 10, great about 15. the fur cog? Sometimes they get a grant, so they can do fifteen thousand right. dollars worth of work for us. Right. But right. then there are years that we have given uh, like ten. Eight or ten, I think. Again, also, so. I gave out the job description. I don't know if you kept it, but you can see it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, I love it. And no. um, it's comprehensive, yeah. and it tries to yeah. cover all the areas of need under under this. It's not just to serve the planning board. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, just Steve's not here, and that's a small board, but that's he does a ton of work. Yeah. yeah. And he messes up. We're in, it's a big problem. Right. So, yeah. uh, Fortunately, I, I he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't, and we're very fortunate to have him. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that that's part of it is that you're looking at a consortium of volunteer boards that are mm -hmm. well functioning. But do, you know, there is a lot to be said for wow. for doing that. Um, I'll, and that going happens. forward, if you're going to get people to join these volunteer boards, it, I mean, they feel better. Support would be helpful. Yeah. 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 Or to stay on. Well, I've put my two cents in all the finance committee meetings, and I'm going to go again, and I'll still. Well, know, what is what is your final it? opinion, Kip? I, I'm I, I think I think it would be beneficial to us uh, for multiple reasons. One is to help all of the boards, but I think the most important job uh, this planner can do is to put all of the things together when so somebody comes through the yes. door gives them a package mm -hmm. that's accurate. Yes. I mean, how many times have we sat here and somebody said, yes. well, this office told me to do this right, and that. But, right, you know, right. we've had people come back month after month over really the same thing because they weren't prepared and of no fault of their own. And, it, you know, for me, just even though I'm a board member, it's frustrating to see yes. them go through that. Yes. Um, and if they can help, I don't believe that there's a lot of uh, commercial growth in this area because of limited space. But if they can help, you know, manage to bring other businesses in, um, you know, the inspections department does well with their fees and, you know, offsetting their expenses. So I think a lot of revenue uh, to pay for this planner could come from that area. Yeah. Um, but Would any of the services offered by the uh, planner be able to um, roll over into the building department and, and cut some costs inside the building department? You know, I, um, I, you know that I think I guess it could be substantial, but I want to say minimal because uh, what that person would do is take a body away from the building inspector so he wouldn't have to spend time talking right. to this individual mm -hmm. and right. free him up to do his job. And, uh, you know, they're, they're quite busy. Uh, you know, they, every day they're off inspecting different right. areas of work. You know, there's not a lot of, you know, uh, commercial right now, but, I mean, they've got several homes to work on and, you know, once Cumberland Farms get going, they're going to be inspecting mm -hmm. there. If the project on Sugarloaf Street gets going, they're going to be there. But they're at the private schools quite a bit. They've always got things going on, and those projects are quite substantial. I know that the building inspector goes there almost every day for a different type of inspection. So, you know, it's a lot. The when other thing, the fees, I'm sorry. Isn't that a lot of the fees are from the construction at the public, I mean, the private schools? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean the fees from a single family house is only, you know, probably $1,500, right. $2,000. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even like from Cumberland Farms, it will add up to be twenty five. Right. But if you say, for whatever reason, if yeah. it ever does stop, but we'll say the private schools, no more expansion or whatever building. Yeah. Well, how, how would that affect the income well, that I, the building department I mean, generates? it definitely would have an effect on it, but I mean, the, the little bit of income, I mean, the little bit of knowledge that I have, I mean, they're already, they're working on an $80 million building now, and they already have another one larger the in the plan. So, you know, it might be five or six years out, but, you know, they, yeah. yeah they but I knew that was a big yeah. part of the fees they bring in yep. that I've heard. Yeah. What What's your take on this, Rod? I, I'm just curious. I really like to hear what I everybody think it's, has. it's a good position, but obviously we all pay taxes here. Oh, yeah. And absolutely. so I think we're all concerned. It's I don't know how you do it. If you could maybe somebody that's already working, if this person could take part of their responsibilities and free up some cash that way. I don't know. I. I know it's, it's, I'm just. We're all stretched. I'm just saying, yeah. Wendy, I, I think it's a yeah. good position, but we have to control our spending somehow. And I don't know if this is the spot to do it in or not, but it has to be done well, somewhere. It's up to the town. 
Yeah, um, w one other thing I wanted, I don't know if you saw, I believe um, it was sent to the board. Um, Kyle sent some suggestions for zoning changes. This is an ideal thing to involve them in, um, yeah. with the person if they have that kind of expertise that you know, we, you've been getting from Pat. Um, but they were some substantial changes in different ways of thinking about how the town's going to go forward. So, um, but I think that's an area we having that kind of expertise would be very helpful as well. Personally, I think yeah. see the finance can we give us a blessing to this position. Yeah. And I'd be more apt to do it. They need your blessing. This is what I'm coming no. here to say. That's what I'm, how, how hard do we want to push because I, think I, is I what, is the question. You know, I'm saying I'm here carrying water for you and for the other boards uh, and oh, for I the building department. I, I'm not even disputing that. I know. So would a, would a motion that a town planner would be helpful to the planning board and perhaps other boards is is that what you're looking for or a vote like that uh, i mean because we're, we're not no. you know no we're looking to either endure i mean to support it's a, it's a vote to support. or let them know you know them they're your friends and neighbors and just say hey whatever but you could put up some put something in writing or take a vote saying you know we'd like the town to um create this position well, I'll, however you want. I mean, I'd be happy to to draft one saying that we've talked about it a long time. We'd like it. We do. We stay concerned about the finances of the town, and we don't want it to be a drag on that. But we'd love them to try to help figure it out. We think it could. I keep the drag out. Of save it. a little. We could save. A, we think we could save a little. Would uh, be willing to see what, what kind of fees the planning board could put into it. Um, it, it could actually increase a couple. I, I fees or their income we have the talked town. about and Pat and I've talked about this so I'll bring this up but Pat we're paying Pat for her services fifteen thousand dollars a year so that would be yeah. going into this as well money yeah. that, right. that the town is yeah. so we wouldn't see Pat anymore I think we would still want to see Pat <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure there are, come on. Yeah, please I feel do. Like I should address. So, so we, we have talked about this, and, and I would agree with Wendy and those of you who have spoken here that I think having this position would be a great advantage to the board. Um, that doesn't mean you wouldn't still be able to rely on our services from FERCOG, but maybe we could do different things. So one thing we had talked about that would be helpful to the town is an overall development guide that could assist in directing people to, you know, what permits needed to be gotten from which boards. And of course, no one now has any time to do that. Mm -hmm. So if you had someone here doing the everyday work of the planning department that I've been helping you with, that might be something that you could ask Burkhog to help you with. So that's just one idea of many. So I think there still would be many opportunities for us to work with the board, but I, I would concur that I think that position would advance the operations of this board and uh, how you coordinate with the other boards. Plus you, you would still do, could do peer review work. I could still do peer review work yeah. as a, a special effort yeah. on the, the larger projects. So it would, it would not mean, you know, yeah. a severing of our relationship, which I think has been a great one. I'm going to try to talk her into applying. <laughs> <laughs> that, I will not I comment made, on that. I just made that up. <laughs> But I'm thinking about it. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. Thank you. So whatever you can, I just want to let you know that it's yeah. it's um, not a sh sure deal necessarily as a recommendation. So. so thank you. So on the, on that note, you brought it up. He, we did distribute this um, proposed changes to the town of Deerfield zoning bylaws about accessory apartments and something else. But I think this it's too late to get. There's no way we could get this onto the. Town meeting, it would need but a public that might hearing. Be something that we could work with in the coming yeah. year. All right. Well, I'm just wondering. It's five minutes of nine, and I don't want to go into this right now. So, yeah, um, this is a lot. So why don't we take this true. home and we'll put it on an agenda for um, April? No, not for the 26th. No, because you have to. We would have had to discuss it and then get it on a public hearing and then have a better. It's a lot. Yeah, the wood, John's just oh, saying. Don't don't. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah we would have. Yeah, we need a couple meetings before we even yeah, have yeah, a public yeah, hearing. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But it's a great. I'm glad he's got it this far yeah, though, because it it's good. a lot of the stuff that we talked about when we did that housing production plan three yes, years ago. Well, one of the yes, he asked me about some of these things, and uh, the building department gets hit quite regularly uh, with these accessory apartments to the fact that you know there's already some non-compliance letters have to go out to right. people who have these things right. that are now right. technically illegal. Right. And, you know, the way our zoning is, it, it creates not only hardships, but it makes good, honest, hard-working people into right. 
unlawful citizens right. because of the way their houses are, you know? Right. So your suggestion we try to fast track this and get it on the... No, I'm, I'm oh, not okay. even say all of it, but I, if there's something that we could do to... Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I understand it's a ways away, but hmm. it's still two months till our town meeting. Well, I am a proponent of the accessory apartments because I, I do know people personally that are utilizing, you know, the mom and dad, and yeah. and then maybe a, the, the the mom passes away, and then, then the, the the son and daughter-in-law move in for a while, yep. you know, and it's it does make. Can we um? And it increases our uh, affordable housing inventory. Can we put this on the agenda for the twenty-six. Why not? I mean, we don't have to spend a lot of time on it. Well, but. I don't know if we got time. I think 26 should be. Well, it's going to be we, mostly this, but yeah. maybe we just take 15 minutes at the end of that. I mean, yes. if, if we just yeah. maybe well, talk about the accessory. Yeah, yeah. Right. let's do that. Uh, all yeah. all, all these things have been voted on once before. Lot size, accessory buildings, duplexes, and we allowed them at one time, and now we don't allow them right. and stuff. So right. I, so yeah, but to, 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 I, I'd be cautious about that because that same argument was just made a little while ago. We already voted on something, and, and it, it, everything comes well, around can, full you circle. You can need to discuss it again. Yeah, right? but I'm saying everything kind of comes, times change. Yeah, it's worth you know? reviewing. Well, and I think, I, and I, I mean, Maybe I, they did for some people, Kip. No, I know, but I, for the same reason that I support the people making a choice, like I said, you know, I hear about it, and he hears about it more so, so it's, I think it's the same thing. You give the people the choice. Well, you know, right, so. you, you should, but yeah. I know well, a lot of sizes have changed from 100 foot to 125. <coughs> All right. Yeah, well, we're, so, uh, this is a we're just going to talk about Just a procedural thing, I think. I've only seen them used for good in town. Pat said something. Also we have just quickly, Mr. Chairman, yeah. um, we had begin, begun to draft a new accessory apartment bylaw yeah. for you yes. a couple of years ago uh -huh. as part of the right. uh, housing production uh, plan, zoning for housing, and it was not carried forward, but I could bring that back up and uh, right. send it back out to you. It would give us a place to start. So let's, um, so I'll ask, Priscilla, to put that on the agenda for after the public hearing on the 26th. We'll take 10 or 15 minutes to talk about this. And that way, if we do want to get something on for town meeting, we can. We'd still have time. It'd be maybe. tight, but it's, yeah. as we've said before, you can hold that Yeah. You can hold that public hearing the night of town yeah. meeting. We've done that law. Okay. It's not necessarily advisable, but it is legal. Let me just leave a seed with everybody. I've read through that the actual uh, accessory apartment bylaw, which is, is quite complex. And... If it was, you could do away with all of that if you just allowed the duplexes, because every accessory house would just be a two-family house. Yeah. You know, it'd save a lot of paperwork, a lot well, of time. Well, I, I think when we go to the two-family house, then you get unoccupied, I mean, un owner unoccupied. Well, and you, then, you, then I, I... You could, and I, I don't know if it originally I'm not started, a fan of that. I don't know if it originated from all of the condos, if you will, but I mean, those really provide an awful lot of affordable homes for people. Yeah. So, well, I all mean, right. I know that there are some cases where it worked. Yeah. To be continued, okay. anything else? Uh, John, we have have a... real quick, the only oh. thing I would bring up, I think it was a Conway, Rachel. Conway. Conway is doing a moratorium. They've got a moratorium before there. Till what, June? Before they're- uh, On housing? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <Fair one. laughs> Any, thank you, anything else on that? I don't know, I, sorry, I didn't no. catch what Pat said, and I, I was hearing a little bit of your conversation about housing. And, accessory apartments, that kind of thing. There's all kinds of, as you probably know, John, state initiatives around affordable housing now. And um, DLTA, that's why, that's, that's why we came up with it, because it was well, a, should state, increase our affordable, affordable housing, housing inventory. Because we have very so we're gonna, No, I'm talking about it. <laughs> affordable means, you know, home ownership as well as, as yeah, subsidized right. for, yeah. So well, we're putting it on our next agenda is what we decided. You want to do it before the, the town meeting? You well, we're, <laughs> we, we want to review it and see if there's anything we could do. I don't, I don't want to hold you back, but you no, know, there like, might be some things that we could do quickly and other things we could do uh, longer term. Accessory apartments, we're, we're talking, just, right? We're yes. going to okay. yes, yes, yes. yes. hone in there. Yes. yes. Like exactly. Greenfield did and didn't, and, and then, then they did a, again. But there right. is a bigger issue around housing, so yeah, that's a later. Yeah. But that's why it came up. That's why it came up. Resources for that. Make a motion to adjourn. Oh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Success.